<laughs> Roll the video. <coughs> Roll the video. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Hoops and Hip Hop. So one of the funnest topics to talk about within the Pokemon community, especially with Sun and Moon on the horizon, is new Pokemon. There have been lots of videos discussing various Pokemon that people would like to see for Sun and Moon, and in fact, the most viewed video on my channel is about this very subject. However, in this video, we're going to look at this topic from a slightly different angle. I've always loved Pokemon that have extended backstories and cool origins behind their designs. So in this video, since we're getting close to Halloween, I'm going to present to you guys five awesome bits of folklore and stories that could make for some awesome ghost type Pokemon. I will also be showing off some concept art that I have come up with for Pokemon based on these stories, complete with names and typings. All the artwork is done by my friend Mayo on Twitter, so be sure to check him out after the video. Also, as a quick disclaimer, I am aware that the Pokedex for Sun and Moon has been leaked. However, I am personally trying to stay spoiler free, so while it's pretty unlikely, if one of these stories appears like it's the basis for a Pokemon that has been leaked, it's just a coincidence and that Pokemon has not been considered at the time of making this video. With all that out of the way though, sit back, relax, and get ready to listen to some awesome stories that could inspire some amazing ghost type Pokemon. So this first story is the Japanese tale of the Speaking Skull. The story goes that one day a man named Manryo was walking down a forest path when he noticed an old beaten up skull. Manryo took pity on the skull and decided to take it off the trail and hide it so that it could rest in peace. Soon after, a man approached Manryo with great enthusiasm, wanting to repay him. Manryo was unsure of what the man was talking about, but agreed to go with him anyways. The man led him to a house where a great feast lay before them. The man told Manryo to eat as much as he wanted, and together the two ate like kings. When it came time for the man to explain himself, he told Manryo that long ago, his brother had killed him, and his body was left to rot in the forest until nothing but his skull remained. As time went on, people had just kicked his skull out of the way like it was nothing, until Manryo came along and placed it in a safe spot, which filled the man with joy and gave him a desire to repay Manryo for his kindness. I think this tale could inspire an awesome evolutionary line of ghost types. The first stage would be a sad, beaten up skull, just like in the story. I imagine it being a pure ghost type and having the name Scrubble, which is a combination of skull and rubble, since the man's body had been basically reduced to rubble in the story. As an homage to the story, I see this Pokemon evolving with Max Happiness into a ghost normal type. The happiness represents the joy of the man after his skull was set aside, and the normal typing comes from the fact that his spirit appeared as a regular man before Manryo. I've given this Pokemon the name Skonchal. It is a combination of the words skull and concha, which is the Japanese word for grateful. I imagine that this would be a payoff type of Pokemon like Gyarados and Milotic, where you really have to nurture the sad little Scrubble in order to get it to evolve, but once it does, it becomes a very powerful Pokemon. Next up on the list is the story of what is probably the most famous Japanese ghost painting, the ghost of Oyuki. During the 1700s, there lived a painter by the name of Maruyama Okyo. The story goes that Okyo had a lover named Oyuki, but she died young, and Okyo mourned her deeply. Then, one night, Okyo awoke to the spirit of Oyuki floating at the foot of his bed. She only stayed there for a moment before she disappeared, and immediately afterwards, Okyo jumped out of his bed and painted the spirit as he saw it, which resulted in this image. Given that this painting is a very famous one in Japan, I think it would make for some great inspiration for a new Pokemon since Japan is where Pokemon originated. For design, this is what Mayo and I were able to come up with. I like the feline appearance that Mayo created, and I wanted it to have some sort of artistic reference in its design in order to connect back to its origin, hence the paintbrush. I've given this particular Pokemon the name Spiruki, which is a combination of Spirit and Oyuki, and it also sounds like spooky when you say it, which really helps to bring the whole thing together. Because it's based around art and painting, I've also given it the Ghost Fairy typing. It only makes sense to have a Pokemon based on such a big cultural icon like the Ghost of Oyuki painting, and I hope to see this story inspire a new Pokemon in the future.
Coming in at number 3 is an infant spirit from Japanese folklore known as Abura Akago. Abura Akago is essentially a baby ghost who licks oil out of lamps. As soon as I found out about this guy while doing research, I knew that his unique concept would work great as a Pokemon. I imagine a Pokemon inspired by Abura Akago as being some sort of gimmick Pokemon that could have a relationship with Lampent since it would like lamp oil as well. Pokemon that have relationships with one another, like Mantine and Remoraid, I find really cool because it makes the whole Pokemon world just that much more interesting. Anyway, I've given this Pokemon the ghost fire typing because of its love for lamp oil, and Tautoil as a possible name. The name is a combination of the words Tot, meaning small child, and oil. Now the gimmick of this Pokemon that I mentioned earlier would have to do with its rarity. I think this Pokemon should be really hard to find unless you have a Lampent in your party, in which case it would be attracted to your area and be easier to obtain. I think this could make for a really fun Pokemon, not only for its design and concept, but also in trying to track it down with the use of a Lampent, and because of that, it gets the solid number 3 spot. In at number 2 is something that is basically a Pokemon already, and once again it comes from Japanese folklore. The Eton Momen is a roll of cotton and a type of yokai that flies around and wraps around people's faces in order to smother them. That might sound a bit gruesome, but the Pokedex is filled with gruesome and creepy Pokedex entries, so I think this would fit right in. I mean, a floating roll of cotton? That just screams Pokemon. As for what a Pokemon based on this creature could look like, this is what I've come up with. It might look cute and friendly, but if you get too close, it will attempt to suffocate you with its long arms. The name I've given this thing is Kotomen, a combination of cotton and the Aton Momen that it's based on. Plus, it's also got the word Omen in there for an added level of creepiness. For a typing, I've decided on Ghost Grass, since it's largely a cotton Pokemon. This is one that I could legitimately see becoming a Pokemon at some point, and somewhere down the line, I really hope it becomes a reality. And finally, at the number one spot, we have the Hawaiian story of the Kaimuki House, because sun and moon. The Kaimuki House is or was a haunted house located in Honolulu that is said to have been haunted by Akasha, which is a man-eating demon from Japanese folklore. Basically, several families throughout the years moved into the house and all were tormented by this evil demon. Then, in 1977, a couple moved into the Kaimuki House completely unaware of its history. On their first night there, the wife awoke to the sight of a ghostly woman with no arms or legs floating in mid-air right in front of her. Horrified, she promptly contacted a priest who instructed her to offer the spirit bread and water every night in order to help it move on. After doing this every night for a week, the spirit was never seen again. So obviously I picked this story because of its ties to Hawaii and therefore Sun and Moon. However, I still think this could make for a really interesting Pokemon. This is the design that Mayo came up with for this Pokemon, and I think it fits the Sinister theme quite well. The name I have given it is Akumuki, coming from Akuma, the Japanese word for devil, and Kaimuki from the Kaimuki house. I see it being a ghost dark type for obvious reasons, and possibly even an event legendary. I imagine you could encounter this Pokemon in an old abandoned house similar to the old chateau by bringing in some sort of food item that you acquired earlier in your journey. That's obviously opposite to the story, where the food was presented to get rid of the ghost, but I still think it would be a cool reference to the story and a really cool way to access this legendary Pokemon. Well, there you have it. Those are five bits of folklore that I think could inspire some amazing ghost-type Pokemon. Pretty much all of these come from Japan because that's where Pokemon is made, but there are ghostly legends from all over the world. So if you know of a story that would make for an awesome Pokemon, or if there's just a particular ghost type you'd like to see, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos and remixes. And with all that being said, I'll smell you guys later.